welcome to our first live stream service of 2021. If you are new, then please let us know in the comments down below. Before we move on to Colin's first talk of the year, we do have some time of worship. So please enjoy, get stood up, get moving, whatever it is you want to do. Sleeping world. They're sleeping world. 
sing it out so we see the other side. Good morning. Hope you had a good Christmas. I hope you had a new year, good new year. Although you probably had a quiet one, and we're looking forward to 2021. As I spoke about last time, there's going to be a lot of changes, and all those changes are going to be for the good and for the better. But I thought I'd kick off this uh, year, this brand new year, with a brand new series, and uh, I'm going to be starting right now with foundations which is what you do when you're going to build something and, and what i'm going to bring this morning hopefully is is foundational uh, as to how we look at uh, our life going forward in uh, 2021 for that i want to read uh, just a passage from from the bible if you've got your bibles with you ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 to 23 now in this passage, Paul is writing right at the very beginning of his letter to the churches, if I can say that. This has always been regarded as, as a, a letter that the churches themselves should take note of. And right there uh, in chapter 1 and verse 20, verse 17, he, he says this, verse, starting verse 15, sorry. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you always in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you might know him better. So that you might know that your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in all the saints and his incomparably great power for us who believe and that power is like the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly realms in that particular passage that we just read this morning, I want to bring out a few things. And one of them I believe is to be vitally important, especially in this day and age in which we live in today. Over the years, I'm sure you've come across the same thing, that when you've had a, uh, a contract with, I don't know, O2, Virgin E, whoever it is, and in this contract, when you come to the end of the contract uh, and you want to renew it, then they say, well, you've got to get the upgrade of the phone that you've, that you've got. Uh, and they try and sell you the upgrade. And I, I, I'm sure, and many of us understand this, many of us realise this, that we're living in the age of the upgrade. And that upgrade can be, certainly when it comes to handheld devices, uh, greater data, uh, amounts of data, greater speeds, greater bandwidth, all this kind of stuff. And it's, it's what didn't exist years ago which now exists today. In other words, it's been upgraded uh, year by year, sometimes uh, in half a year. Uh, better cameras, better this and better the other. And we've sometimes uh, get into this mindset of a cycle of upgrade. We've got to have an upgrade on what we've experienced or what we have. And sometimes that can refer to our life as a Christian, that we want the next upgrade that God has got to give us. So the next upgrade that the Holy Spirit 
wants to give us. And it might come as a shock to you right now, but there is no such thing as an upgrade in God. There is no such thing as an upgrade in Christ. In America, just north of uh, San Francisco, uh, there's a tree, the sequoia tree. Now, the sequoia tree is recognized as the largest and, and longest living uh, organism on Earth. It can live to beyond 2,000 years of age. It also gets tried in fire. And this particular uh, tree, huge, massive tree, drops its cones and within its cones is contained its seeds and it's only when a fire rages through in northern California that actually the cones open and the seeds come out now there's a message in that in its own but those seeds so small four of them can actually fit on a, a 20p piece within each of those seeds is the power of a sequoia tree it doesn't need any upgrades. It doesn't need anything bolted on or added to it. It doesn't need anything else. It's all contained within that seed to produce one of the largest and oldest living organisms on earth. And that's not much different to how we are in Christ. When we come to Christ as Savior and Lord, and this is something I think we find difficult to kind of understand. Um, right here in the very early days of the church, the message has always been what you get from Jesus the minute you come to know him as Savior and Lord is the full package. You don't get anything that needs to be upgraded based on the latest technology or based on your performance or based on anything else it's all in that package all in that seed that god plants is it plants into our hearts that we can become powerful and mighty and most christians miss this out they don't understand the concept of this they think somehow they've got to get another installment or another bolt on you get everything that God desired for you when you came to Christ. When you came to Christ, of course, Jesus said, I want you to receive the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit, now Jesus said, when, when it comes to the Holy Spirit, he said, this is like a key. And it's like a key that unlocks the power that is within you. In fact, in, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 16, when he said, I will build my church, he said, I'm gonna give you a key. I'm going to give you a key to bind on earth that which should be bound in heaven that, and, and loose on earth. So the binding and the loose and the key really is referring to ourselves and our lives in this world in which we live. And again, I think we miss out so much because we really struggle with this concept. We've got to start somewhere with this. And really, we've got to start with Jesus. In verse 17, Paul writes this. I keep asking that God may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know Jesus better. Now, notice God didn't say the spirit of understanding. No, because this is faith. Faith does not depend upon whether you've got it all worked out or not, whether you've got it all figured out. No, God says, I want you to just take this step of faith. And that's the Holy Spirit leading you into a bigger and greater revelation of Jesus Christ. But then he says, I want you to know Jesus better. And it's sure that before we can know what we have, it is important that we know who gave it to us. And the, and the more we get to know who gave it to us, the more we're able to operate in the power or in the context of what we have get to know jesus the author and the perfecter of your faith and then paul goes on to write in verse 18 he, he talks about the riches of our inheritance now i don't know whether you've ever dreamt that you've got an inheritance somewhere but in god there is an amazing inheritance for you and me 
And I believe that in 2021, many of us are going to, we're going to know what that inheritance is because I know the Holy Spirit is going to reveal it to us. Paul writes this, that your heart may be enlightened. God may shine his light into your heart so that you may know. Now, so that you may know of a, a confidence and an assurance that can never be doubted. First of all, that you may know the hope the hope is the full potential that you have. Do you may know his calling. We've very often said that God has got a plan for our lives. He has called you. You personally, you individually. When you get to know him, you get to know his calling for you. And then thirdly, he talks about the riches. Now the riches here, he talks about the true value of our inheritance. I'm sure many of us have got many, many things that we probably have said to ourselves and said to others, if only I had this or if only I had that. And God says, they are not the things of true value. And so God wants to reveal to you and me that glorious inheritance in Christ. As someone said, you've got to know in your knower. And this is the beginning of, of the transformation that Paul writes about, the metamorphi, where the seed becomes a shoot breaking through the ground. And then he writes this, this great, this in, incomparably great power, verse 19, incomparably great power for us who believe. Now it's not for anybody else it's for us who believe this is not for some perfect individual perfect saint perfect by the way uh, the only reason we know of these saints these thick that have been stained glass windows is because they're imperfect god sees you sees your heart god loves you exactly as you are and this incomparably great power lives in you i wonder if you know how powerful belief is if you can believe that boy what a difference that would make power of belief is dependent upon the object of our belief when the object of our belief is the risen son of god then that belief becomes infinitely powerful so here it is and in this passage, Paul uses five separate Greek words to describe this power that is within us for us who believe. The first one is the word dynamis. God is with us by his presence. This was the very word that Jesus used in Acts chapter 1 and verses 5 and 7. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that's this word uh, dynamis means that God's presence within us. And then he talks about, he, he refers to it as this great power. That means that it cannot be compared to anything else. There is nothing on earth or ever will be on earth that can compare with the power of God in you and in me. And then he talks about working. Now this power is at work. It never ceases, never stops to be at work. It is not static. It is not restricted. It is always on tap. I can remember years ago, I went to work on a job up in uh, uh, Northumberland, Keel the Dam, it was called. And this huge dam, this massive dam, all the water within that dam, you would look at it and it was like a, a, a mill pond. It, it seemed that it had no uh, uh, structure to it at all it was just a big body of water yet down below at the bottom of the, that dam they had two pipes and one was called uh, the scourer pipe and the scourer pipe every now and then they would open the taps and the water that used to come out with such power and such force I actually saw it once destroy a five foot thick concrete wall it just destroyed it as if it wasn't there 
And that really is, is the working of God's power. It is not static. It isn't restricted. And then he talks about the mighty strength in this passage we read. And this reminds me of the title of God in the Old Testament, El Shaddai. And El Shaddai, it means God Almighty. And one of the, uh, the translations of, of El Shaddai is that the one in whose presence no enemy can stand, no foe can stand. Uh, the psalmist writes about this quite a lot, doesn't he? And we see this, uh, hallelujah, that in his presence, even the, the, your greatest enemy, whatever it is, cannot stand because of this mighty strength. And then he talks about exertion. And, and Paul refers to this exertion as that which Christ did and, and God and the Holy Spirit working together in unison to raise Christ from the dead. Now, no theologian has ever got to the bottom of that whole concept of what happened and what it means fully. But with it, we can actually see the exertion not just to transform death unto life, but to deal with the sin and deal with the degradation of my life and your life and transform us into this new creation that Jesus brought. I believe this is the time to take stock and take stock of our lives. We can take stock of not just 2020 but really what this has done to us in 2020 how it's maybe lowered our faith threshold maybe how it's lowered our vision for the future i think we need to take stock right now and paul writes this in corinthians he said let a man examine himself and just like his letter to the ephesians paul spends most of his writings on this subject encouraging the believer but me and you to press on to press upwards to grab a hold of that which has grabbed a hold of us it's an encouraging sign and we need that encouragement why because we can get discouraged quite easily and quite quickly so let's do that i can tell you with the message like this where you can be and the devil can come to you and tells you, you can't. Well, I'm going to give you right now an assurance that you can believe God. You can believe God and the power of God in you. It's in you. Get your head around that one. Wrap it around. I'm going to give you a couple of takeaways right now this morning. The first one is who's ruling in your heart and mind. Do not let worry rule in your heart and mind. Give it to God and he'll give you his power. A power of understanding, a power of revelation, a power of wisdom. If only you would say to, about this worry, God, I want you to have it. Don't be anxious. Anxiety more often than not comes because our circumstances wash over us or our circumstances bury us. Well, can I say to you this morning, let God control your circumstances. Come to this, uh, the, the situation whereby you actually say, Lord, I cannot do anything about my circumstances other than I accept that you're in charge. When we do that, we give God the right to enter our circumstances, to change our circumstances, but more importantly, to change our attitude towards our circumstances. Don't get angry or frustrated. Hand it over to God, your God. Don't let other people control your thoughts but fix your eyes upon Jesus the author and the perfecter of your faith if you've got a problem right now this morning don't know what it is 
going into 2021. I don't want you to carry anything from 2020 into 2021. What I'd like you to do is Jeremiah did this. Jeremiah received a letter from the king and it wasn't a very promising letter. It wasn't a letter of encouragement. It was a letter of condemnation. And Jeremiah took this letter and he didn't read it. He just took it to God and said, Lord, listen to what this guy is saying. I want you to answer him. Wow. That is complete faith. Now, Jeremiah was actually saying, Lord, I don't care where this goes as long as it goes where you are leading it. So don't let anybody else dictate what goes into your mind, your circumstances. Let God have complete control. Next year, next week, I'm actually going to be starting a brand new series. And that brand new series is 2021, the year of the Lord's favour. And in this series, we're going to look at quite a few things. Not only where we've come from, which I believe, I believe God has pressed a reset button on many of the things that's happened in this world. Nobody, but nobody anticipated this time last year where we would be at the end of 2020. And yet, here we are. God, I believe, has set the uh, reset the the reset button or press the reset button and said right I want to start something from scratch again and in this passage we just read in Ephesians we start by acknowledging and recognizing that the power of God resides within us that your prayers are powerful that your words are powerful that your deeds and your actions are powerful in this new creation that you are. Let's get ready to do this work of transformation in 2021. God bless you. Thank you, Colin, for that encouraging talk. I know I definitely needed that to start my year off right. Now, as a lot of you all know, we do sponsor through the Compassion Charity a beautiful seven-year-old Guatemalan boy called Josu. Now, he is one of six children, so our donations every single month help to bring him and his family out of abject poverty. Thank you so much for everybody who gave money during our Christmas service. We raised £120 for which I think is amazing. But it isn't too late to donate for a special Christmas donation for him. Remember, if you want to support our church financially, then you can do that online or you can text CP011 followed by the amount to 64647. Or you can download the GIFT app, that's G-I-V-T, and search for Prescott Community Church. And if you want to make a separate donation or include a donation to Josu, then please let Grace know or let us know via Facebook so we can make sure that money gets to him. We are now in the new church building. We are in OCR and we are recording there each week as well for our live services. And we do need some volunteers for our tech team. Laura works incredibly hard week in, week out to make sure that our service looks lovely every single week. But we are in need of volunteers for that team. Now, full training will be provided. So if you think that you can spare just a couple of hours each month to help out, that would be massively grateful. Please either let us know via the church Facebook page or you can message Laura directly if you think that you can help. Remember, we are family here at Prescott Community Church. So if you are isolating for whatever reason, you are struggling to get out of the house, then please let us know so we can do what we can for you, whether that's getting you groceries, ringing you every week just to check you're okay, whatever it is, please let us know and we are here to help. Now, time for some more worship and we will see you next week. Bye.